or the, the meaning of that word. But they definitely want to show how big they are, how strong they are. Because if they can remind bears of that, especially if it's um, just through posturing or other behaviors, then they can conserve energy in the future by not having to remind those bears that they are on top of the hierarchy. And 747 usually has access to the best fishing spots at the falls, unless 856 is here. And if you want to know more about you know, these individual bears, you're curious about um, to see more photos of them, what they looked like in the, in the past, just uh, go to Katmai's website you can, and uh, look for the ebook section. You can also find a direct link to that page uh, by scrolling down to uh, just above the comments on explore.org. If you're watching the bear cam there and you can find the link to the, the Bears of Brooks River ebook, you can download that and that's the most comprehensive guide to the life history of all of these bears that we see here. Competition, challenge, growth, learning you know we've been talking about those those things this evening a little bit and uh, we'll take a break from the bears at the falls look downstream quickly because uh, our so-called courting pair is coming back the female is moving um, you know to the left side of your screen standing on the rock right now the adult male that big 856 was dominant bear on the river is uh, standing downstream of her. And again, courting is a process where the male tries to habituate the female to his presence. For the rest of the year, he's really a threat to her. It's a, a big dominant bear. Can obviously inflict a lot of punishment on her if he happened to attack her. So, you know, bears are very wary of one another. When you see a, just a, this giant bear that's maybe you know, a third larger or more larger than you, you want to keep your distance. So it does take a long time, and in many cases, for the female to get used to the presence of the adult male before she gives him the opportunity to mate. And this is, so this is, a, you know, fairly typical courting behavior, the male just following the female incessantly. And I want to turn back to the waterfall real quick. Again, there's a lot happening tonight. 402 caught another fish. And that cub <laughs> was able to take a little bit of fish away from her. It looks like almost half of that. So we'll we'll watch this again. This is, you know these are you know fairly large fish, four to seven pounds on average. Its sibling though, maybe it's just a little too uh, unsure of the if it can hold its ground on the against the force of that water. So it's sitting on the bank there. And siblings don't share food either. There's a lot of competition within the litter. There's competition for mother's milk. Doesn't seem like all of the, the teats on a female bear will produce, produce milk at the same rate. Oh, and this should be interesting. Maybe, I thought maybe 775, the bear closest to me here might walk up and try to steal that fish from that cub, but it looks like he's going to try to uh, maybe avoid that. So maybe that bear, um, that, that, that cub on the waterfall eating the fish, being just a little bit more aggressive, feeling, you know, having the confidence to go out into the water, might grow just a little bit faster than its sibling. And that certainly can give it a competitive advantage when it uh, is weaned. It might be just a little bit larger, a little bit more skilled at catching fish. And these cubs, again, are in their second summer. They're what we call yearling cubs. This may be their last summer with this female. And if you're... Uh, just tuning in, my name is Mike Fitz. I'm a park ranger at Katmai National Park and Preserve. I'm on the Alaska Peninsula, about 300 miles southwest of Anchorage. And I'm standing on a wildlife viewing platform, an elevated platform about 10 feet off of the ground at world famous Brooks Falls. 
If you've ever seen a, a photograph of a bear catching a, a salmon in its mouth, it probably was taken right here. And it could have been this bear that we're watching. She's been uh, standing on the lip of the waterfall for over a decade. We have some bears here that we haven't seen at the waterfall very much this year. Like this adult male, this is number uh, 634, he is nicknamed Popeye. Kind of got that nickname because he's big furry forearms, especially when he was a younger bear, a sub-adult bear. Those are the um, immature bears that are between two and a half and five and a half years old or so. They're the teenagers of the bear world. And of course he's um, you know, a mature adult male right now. He doesn't quite have the furry forearms that he used to, but he still has very blonde ears, slightly upturned muzzle, a fairly prominent shoulder hump. And uh, so he, he can be distinctive because of those features. He's not, you know, at the top of the hierarchy, he's kind of mid-ranking for an adult male. Most bears don't attain the size of bears like 747 in the plunge pool or 8.